to subscribe to my channel and while you're at it, click the bell to be notified of future videos. Today's block is the half rectangle triangle and I'm going to give you information for multiple sizes. We're going to demo a 12 inch finished block. The reason I'm doing this is to fix an error in the block, this block. This is July 1st block called Pinwheel Square. When I finish recording a video and editing my video, I take the block from the cutting mat and I put it on my design wall so I can admire it for a few days. Well, I kept looking at this block and something was telling me what is wrong with this block. Something is definitely wrong with this block. I just didn't know what it was and I couldn't figure it out as I was piecing it. Obviously, I didn't notice it. But then it dawned on me. In the past, I've made half rectangle triangles, but I've either used a template like this, the perfect rectangle template from Creative Grids, or the rectangle part of the Tri-Rec tool, or I have used AccuQuilt, and I haven't made that many, but the times I have used it, I've always used some special ruler or die to cut them out. And the advantage to the special rulers is they are designed to do that, to make that one thing or two things. So all of the, all of the seam allowances are built into it and it's just easy breezy. But my problem was I wanted to also show you if you were rotary cutting these pieces and you just had a plain ruler, just like this, a regular quilting ruler and a rotary cutter, how do you cut and piece these blocks accurately? So I searched the Google and I found a few really good tutorials. Uh, they weren't video tutorials, so you had to look at the pictures. And the problem is with this half rectangle triangle. And I cut this with the rotary cutter and I cut it slightly larger and then trimmed it down. And it turns out my problem was with the trimming down part. Here is the problem. This, this is my point and it's floating. I say it's floating because it doesn't end in a seam. It just floats there because it has this little part here. Let's see if you can see it. The point ends here. It should end right here. It should be the same part. So when I sew a quarter inch seam allowance, this will be a pretty point, but this little floater thing will just be floating around ugly. And I don't want that. I mean, if you want it floating, that's, that's good, but I don't want it floating. And the other part is down here. This looks like a quarter inch seam allowance right there. This is not a pretty point. I want this seam line to go right here at this intersection. And I want it to be as pretty as possible, and it's not. So it turns out that the piecing was fine, the cutting was fine, it was the trimming. So I'm going through this block so we can practice making half rectangle triangles. Using the rotary cutter, we're going to cut the pieces slightly larger and then we're going to trim them down the correct way this time. And it, it all makes so much more sense now. So let's start with the block. This is the half rectangle triangles. We're going to demo the 12 inch block, but I've got a chart here for all kinds of other blocks. Once you know how to do this, you can make any size, just about any size block you want. Here is the diagram. And here are four blocks put together. And here are four blocks put together and two of them rotated. If you look on Pinterest or uh, the internet and you search for half rectangle triangle quilts, you'll get tons and tons of pictures of people's beautiful quilts made with just this simple little unit. Okay, so let's get down to it. Remember, this is for the 12 inch finished block. Patch A is a half rectangle triangle, three inches by six inches finished. We're going to cut a rectangle, eight inches by four inches. And remember, this is gonna be slightly larger because we're going to cut it down after we piece it. We'll need two patches, of two background fabrics and two patches of two accent fabrics. So if you look at the diagram, the A patch, they're in pairs. So the A patch background is the same with, with the A patch accent fabric. 
and these are all facing the same way. If you see the bee patches, they're the same, but they're facing the opposite way. And the bee patch is the same thing. It's a three by six inch finished half rectangle triangle. We cut eight inches by four inch rectangles. What we're going to do is, once we cut these rectangles, we're going to stack all these right sides up and trim it going in this direction. Because that determines that this is patch A and these are the directions they go. And with patch B, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to stack all of these pieces right sides up. Then we're going to trim it, or we're going to cut it in half diagonally going in this direction. That gives you your left and your right sides. A is, we'll call that the left side, and B is the right side. And here I'm just telling you to place all the fabrics right side up before you cut it on the diagonal. Now these instructions I didn't write step one, step two, step three, because it's just too hard to illustrate that because of all the weird angles. But, so you'll have to come back and look at this video to see the demo of how it was done. And you'll be able to, there will be a code here. If you are viewing this on the internet, you can click the code. If you are, have printed it out, you can scan the code with your phone and it will take you to the video. Then here are the, there's the chart. So if you look here on the finished size, we are making a three by six inch finished half rectangle triangle for our demo. This tells you what size to cut the rectangles, and once you've pieced it, this tells you what size to trim it down to. So let's get started. Here are my patches, my A and B patches for one of the units. And when I say unit, I mean this side, this half of the block is one unit. We used four different fabrics in this unit and another four different fabrics in this unit. So for each unit, I have four rectangles. And they're either A or B rectangles. Right now, they're all the same size. We don't know what A and B is. So we'll put this one to the side and we'll just cut one right now so we won't get ourselves confused. So you're gonna put the two accents in separate piles or stacks. Then you're going to match a background to each of them. Okay, so we look at this, and if you look at these cutting instructions, this is going to be patch A, and this is going to be patch B. So we've got them stacked right sides up, as even as possible. And then we're going to cut it in half on the diagonal. So if you look at patch A, it is cut from the upper left to the lower right. So let's cut, make those cuts. And what you have here, you'll have this and this. So there's one half rectangle triangle, and then you'll have another one exactly the same, like this. There's two half rectangle triangles there. Now for this one, this is patch B, remember? And patch B is cut from the lower left to the upper right. Let's do this. Okay. Now let's open these up. And you see these are opposite. Because these, if you look at backgrounds and accents. So here the accent is sitting up this way and here it's sitting up that way. So it's we'll say the back of the chair is on the left and the back of this chair is on the right. To me this looks like a chair that you sit on so this would be the back of the chair and this is the seat. So the back is to the right here and the back is to the left over here. And when we put these two together We'll sew these together, then we'll trim them, and we'll put them together like this. And then this will go like this. So this is half of our block. It's 
If it's a 12 inch finish, this is 6 across and 12 inches down. And we'll do the other stack the same exact way. So now let's go and I'll show you how to piece these half rectangle triangles. When I am sewing these, I'm so afraid that I'll stitch them wrong. You stitch it like this, then you have to rip it out and do it all over again. So I like to put it like this. Okay, this is how I'm going to stitch it. Flip the light fabric over. Here's our seam line. We'll take a ruler with quarter inch markings on it and we want to lay it, the quarter inch marking just below the line of the fabric. This is a long piece so it's a little bit difficult. You want to try as close as you can to put this line here, the dashed line of this quarter inch line, right at the edge of the fabric. This is pretty close. We don't want it up like this because you can see the fabric peeking through underneath that quarter inch line. If we mark a line here, that's going to give us way more than a quarter of an inch. So let's move it back down to just below the fabric. And again, it's not that important that you get this exact. You just want to get as close as you can because you want to have more room later when you trim it. So now I'm just going to use my pencil and be sure you get the two ends marked really well because that's really all we need. So there's my markings and I'll bring it back over here like this and here I'm telling myself, reminding myself this is how they go together. So we'll flip this over and I start here at the bottom by placing this fabric. I'm lining up this edge here with this edge and this where the marking meets the end of this top fabric. I want to line it up where it lands on the bottom of this fabric. So I grab this little tail, hold it down, and that's pretty close. You can see here is where the marking is and it, it lands really close to the edge of this fabric. Again, remember it's, it's going to be trimmed off later so don't knock yourself out if you can't get it positioned just exactly perfect. Then I put my finger here so I don't want this to move. Pick up this and then we're going to match these the, this side here like that and I'll put my finger up here if I match it better and let's look at the top part this is what you want to aim for this marked line you want to match right where the fabric peeks out underneath so we've matched the ends of the pieces of fabric here and here and then we'll just sew a quarter of an inch all the way down. If you're having trouble aligning these pieces for stitching, try using a glue stick. They, they make glue sticks that are quarter of an inch little glue pins. I just use this um, school glue and put a little bit in the seam allowance. I've got a little bit right there in the seam allowance. Then take this top piece and place it like this and then press down just a, a few seconds and it'll stay there so it won't go anywhere. Then, And you can do this all at your machine so do that and then move up here and put this, line this up, fold this back and put your little bit of glue right there and put that back. Now you can pick this up, it won't come apart and you can go, you can do a bunch of these, glue a bunch of these and take them over to your sewing machine and just start chain piecing them. Okay, so now let's look at what we've done here. Here's a close-up, there's the stitching on that end. You see it's not quite perfect and that's fine because that's why we made it a little bit larger. Then we're going to press the seams open like this and now we're going to trim and this is where I messed up before so we're going to do this right this time. You need a ruler like this that has quarter inch mark this way and quarter inch mark this way and you see where these two intersect this is the 
the part of this ruler we're going to use most. We're going to use that to line up our seam line. I start by, this. I call this the zero side, and we want to cut it six and a half by three and a half, and this is a six and a half inch ruler. And if I put this, let's see, I need to show you the whole thing, but I need to show you zoomed in. Okay, so let's go zooming in. You see I'm lining up, I'm lining up the, the long edge with the long edge of the ruler. And then I'm looking at this little intersection here and I want it to land right where the two fabrics are sewn together. So I want that point to match and I want this edge to be straight. We can cut off a little bit, but we want it to be mostly as close as we can get. So there is my point that matches and this is straight. Let me zoom out. You can see it all. There's just a slight bit of um, amount to trim off here. And then we're going to check this before we cut it. We want to make sure that we have enough three and a half inches over here. So from here to here has to be three and a half inches. And we have plenty. We've got about a quarter, we've got about an eighth of an inch to spare over here. So we got, we've checked our left side, we've checked our right side, and we checked our point right here. Now we'll just trim first the long side and then the top. We'll just take all these little pieces off, okay? When you do that, you'll have this little bitty tiny piece coming out. So when you sew your quarter of an inch here and here, they will meet right here at this point because you measured it before you cut it. Now let's flip it around and we're going to do this side. Okay. So now I know I've cut this side and this side and this is what I'm going to line up. So I line up my six and a half here and my three and a half over here. When you do that, this lines up, this little quarter inch intersection lines up right on that seam line. So you know you've got it right. We have our point on our seam line, we have our three and a half inch lined up here, and our six and a half inch lined up here. Now we cut off these two. Start with the long side, and then the top. And now that has the little part that sticks out a little bit. Now this is the trimming that will get you the pretty points. So go ahead and sew all the others. You'll have seven more to piece like this. And so piece one at a time or all seven together, however is easiest for you. And then we'll come back and put the block together. When you're trimming the half rectangle triangles that are facing the other way, you might have to trim them with the block this way. You're going to do the same thing. You just reverse. There's three and a half inches on this side now and six and a half on this side. And you'll start again with your little corner, your zero place, and line it up on that seam line. And try to keep your ruler as straight to the unit as possible. Then you'll want to make sure you have enough six and a half inches so you have the six and a half is right here on the edge of this ruler. There's plenty of fabric. And then look for your three and a half inches down here. And here it is right here. So there's plenty of fabric there. And you know you can cut this and this. If you're left-handed, everything will be from this side and you cut this way. So let's cut this. Now flip this around. Line up your six and a half here and your three and a half down here. When you do that, your zero point or your intersection of your two quarter inch line should be right there, and it is. Now you'll trim this. Okay, it's the same way. You just, one you start with the long side, the other you start with the short side. And now go ahead and trim everything, and then we'll put the block together. We have all of our half rectangle triangles are stitched. 
So now we'll put the block together and we'll just start one unit at a time. Let's see. And let's do this. No. Now I would sew these two together and then these two together, then these two and these two. Press the seams open, then sew this half and these half together. When you are sewing these together, you'll want to make sure that your seam lines line up. You first match them by looking at them. You can see the, the seam is there and then the little bits that you left on there, a fabric on the side are there, but then the best thing to do is feel with your finger that it's kind of stacked right on top of each other. Each seam line is stacked. And to test it, you can pull back like this. And if they match right there, then that's pretty close. So stitch your quarter of an inch, and then do that for all of them. Press your seams open. And here is the block, and I'm, I'm really pleased with this block. I only messed up cutting this one, and I'm going to blame that on my dog Lucy. She loves to bark at the thunder, and she scared me. So I think that that's why that happened. Anyway, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Here, I'll zoom in and show you. So somewhere I did this wrong, or maybe I just didn't do it at all, and then it's wrong right here. But everywhere else, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the results. So this was a practice and I just think doing these are fun. It takes me four or five times as long to describe how to do it than it does to actually do it. But I think you'll be pleased with your results too. I wanted to tell you another thing about the glue. I haven't used the glue in a long while and actually this was the first time I've used glue since I started pressing my seams open and I noticed the one piece that I demoed with the glue it was very difficult to press those seams open because they were glued closed. So you might want to consider that and maybe not use the glue if you press your seams open or maybe as soon as you stitch it to open it up and take, take that apart so you can press it. It's something I wasn't thinking of but something that did happen and I wanted to let you know that if you're going to use glue. And here is the back. And thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and while you're at it, click the bell to be notified of future videos.